podcast for Monday, July 29th. Okay, so we have the moon in Taurus pretty much here all day. We will see the moon go void, of course, at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Gemini energy at 5.28 p.m., so a very short window of time that the moon will be void, which, of course, works in our favor because when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, and we definitely don't need any more of that particular energy in the cosmos. Now, the transition from Taurus energy to Gemini energy is always a very interesting one because, of course, Taurus energy is a fixed Earth sign. Fixed means we want to stick to what is tried, tested, true, what is comfortable, what is familiar. The Taurus energy has us in the present moment, in touch with our physical body, in touch with our physical environment, and we are kind of not looking so far back. We're not looking so far ahead. We're just trying to pluck out the silver linings of this present moment. We're trying to make ourselves comfortable. We're trying to make ourselves feel okay with thinking about certain aspects of the future. When we shift into the Gemini energy, that is a mutable energy, which means that we have to be flexible. We have to adapt. We have to change. The Gemini energy being an air energy means that we're coming out of our introverted shells that we were in, in the Taurus energy. We're going out into the world. We're looking to have conversations. We're looking to have collaborations because some very strong aha moments, some very profound epiphanies pop off in the most general of interactions. And of course, we're looking to expand upon some of the routines, the structures, the let's call it ideas for the future that we just started percolating on in this Taurus energy. So, of course, taking you back to Saturday evening, that is when we had the last quarter moon pop off in this Taurus energy. So that was a reflection back over this past month, even longer, taking us back into cancer season in order for us to realize what we're no longer in alignment with, what is changing, what we have to eliminate, what we have to adapt to, what we have to kind of transform in our physical realm. So moving into the Gemini energy is really going to do wonders for us to gain a different perspective, to push the boundaries of what we thought we wanted, what we thought we knew, what we thought we needed and deserved. Now we're going to expand upon that. We definitely adopt more of an extroverted energy, a little bit more of a chatty Kathy type of vibe. We are definitely going to be all up in the headspace. So with all of that being said, we have nine different aspects popping off here today. All nine involve the moon, which means that this is the second moon day in a row. If you haven't listened to the Ascension forecast that I put out for this week, I'm going to recommend you do that where I go into a little bit more depth on how weird this week is, how quote unquote quiet and calm this week is, especially because here yesterday, Sunday, we only had four different aspects taking place in the cosmos and all four of those involved the moon as well. So now we're having a moon day on Monday, which is ruled over by the moon, which means that we're in for an emotionally refining day. There's going to be some aha moments. There's going to be some epiphanies. We are going to further expand on some ideas. So We kick the day off with the moon in Taurus energy, getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who also rules over the Taurus energy, by the way, who is currently in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in Leo energy. So of course, this square is supposed to highlight where we're conflicted, where we're having tension, where we're kind of feeling the tug of war within us on what we actually want for our futuristic selves. Now, Venus being in this Leo energy, she's bold, she's brave, she's courageous enough to put herself out there in ways that we don't normally do. She is willing to make big moves, to go after what it is that she wants, she needs, she desires. The moon in Taurus, however, doesn't want us to think that far ahead, doesn't want to make those great big changes, doesn't want to declare those types of affections. And so we're going to be highlighting where it is that part of us just wants things to stay the same because they're predictable, they're familiar, they're comfortable, even though they're not comfortable anymore, versus the kind of uncomfortability, unfamiliarity that we would have to face if we were actually going to start making the major moves that Venus wants us to make. So again, highlighting where there's growing pains in our heart space. 
The moon and Taurus then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is now retrograde in Aries energy. So just a reminder, if you need to take a listen to that particular astro forecast to understand the influence that Chiron's retrograde is going to mean for us from now until the end of the year, definitely go ahead, remind yourself, refresh yourself. It's definitely working for us because we're all tapping in to a new mood, a new attitude to kind of heal to kind of get our shit together, to address the areas of concern instead of sweeping them under the rug. The moon interacting with Chiron in this way, we're feeling good about this version of self. We're feeling strong. Although we know that we are about to move into a period of time, a phase, if you will, that major change is going to take place, right now we're just building in our self-confidence. We're building in our self-esteem. We're recognizing a new worth, a new value within ourselves. We're recognizing what it is that we actually believe that we deserve. Again, a lot of this particular energy is cultivating the fire, the spark, the flame in our inner realm needed in order to keep the pace up when we start making moves and we run into those first set of obstacles. So we're seeing the growth. We're seeing our ability to slowly but surely kind of adopt this new version of self. We're feeling a little bit more comfortable in the parameters of this new version of self as well. The moon is then going to semi-square the north node in Aries energy. So a semi-square it does highlight tension and conflict, but it's not as intense as a full square would be. That North Node in Aries energy trying to get us on the right path, trying to show us our soul's mission, our soul's purpose, trying to set ourselves free, trying to support this independent quest to know thyself. And so again, the North Node really wants us focused on the future. We're really not that comfortable to think that far ahead with the moon in Taurus, thus the semi-square, thus our fixation to wanting to keep things the same when technically speaking, we're being encouraged to change everything up. The moon then is going to make a positive interaction with the sun. So the sun, of course, in his rulership in Leo energy, shining a bright light on our heart space, what we're being called to do, called to pursue, where it is that we need to make big moves in our lives in order to pivot away from doing the same old, same old and getting what it is that we've already got. Anytime there's an interaction between the moon and the sun, there's going to be a profound aha moment on what we need, what we want, what we desire, and what's required of us in order to actually get said vision, goal, and dream. And so emotionally speaking, we are firm, we are stabilized, we are in a fixed earth energy with this Taurus energy. The sun is in a fixed fire sign. So we're just being as present as possible, as aligned with our heart space as possible, giving ourselves permission to kind of, you know, think about the options, the opportunities to make changes, to make some major transformations in our lives, but also giving ourselves permission to not have to do it right now. Right. So there's like a peace, a calmness that comes when knowing that, guess what? You're about to dive into a brand new chapter, but it ain't happening today. So don't worry about it. You know, it's that kind of vibe. There is going to be an illumination, a new illumination on what our heart is craving for us as far as new experiences go. But again, not feeling the pressure to actually make those changes, make those major transformations. The moon is then going to come up to bump into conjunct Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy. So a conjunction is an ending of a chapter just as much as it is a beginning of a chapter. What is ending is the confusion, the division, the tug of war, the realization that if we want something different, we're going to have to do different. The beginning is that, yeah, we want to stick to what is tried, tested and true because of this moon being anchored in this fixed earth energy of Taurus, but we're willing to spice our mundane routines up just a tad. We're willing to adopt a different method of going about our day. We're willing, if you will, to take a risk in our emotions to just dabble in what could be without, again, applying the pressure to actually decide, to actually choose, to actually take action on what it is that we arrive at. The last aspect that the moon in Taurus will be making is, of course, an interaction with Neptune. Why do I say, of course? Well, because Neptune is retrograde at the 29th critical crisis degree of Pisces energy, meaning any planet or luminary in this case 
that comes towards the 29th degree of any sign is going to have some sort of interaction with Neptune. It could be good, it could be bad. In this particular instance, it's a good one. It's a sextile. It means that these energies are merging together in order to create a new goal, new vision, new dream, new emotional want, need, and desire. The beauty thing about this is that if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know I really, really enjoy Taurus energy and Pisces energy interacting with each other. Reason being, Pisces energy is our dreams, our creativity, our imagination, our intuition, our soul self. While the Taurus energy is the physical form, whatever it is that we're able to conjure up as far as a goal, a vision, a dream goes, we're able to bring it to life, into form, into reality. We're able to manifest it through the Taurus energy that rules over the physical form, that rules over the physical environment, thus Earth energy. So emotionally speaking, we are kind of getting the good kind of vibes. We are really seeing where it is that there are certain aspects in our life that are very interesting, keeping us focused, keeping us engaged, and really kind of reassuring to us, reminding us, refreshing us, renewing us that there is some new creative force energies coming in. We are getting downloaded with new visions, new goals, new dreams. We are moving out of the ending, releasing, purging stage, and we will start focusing very, very, very shortly on what we need to build, what we need to create, bringing some of those goals, dreams, and visions into the physical reality. It is at this point that the moon goes void, of course, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We lock into that Gemini energy, 528 p.m. 642 p.m., we have our first moon and Gemini aspect, and it is a positive one with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in the Pisces energy. So we love air and water together, which, you know, Gemini energy is air. We have the water energy from Pisces because that's when electricity happens. That's when sparks happen. That's when imagination pops off, where solutions pop off. And because the moon in Gemini is kind of looking outside of the boundaries that we had built this goal, dream, and vision in, we're looking to expand on it. We're looking for a different perspective. We're looking for new information. The Saturn energy brings in a super focus on what we have to remove out of our lives in order to build something new in the place of the things that are no longer attached or in alignment to this new version of self to our futuristic wants needs and desires so we're going to get a little bit tunnel vision on our plans or what could be our plans especially for the long term because this is a positive aspect this is likely going to kind of trigger and activate new level of excitement new level of inspiration, a new option, if nothing else. The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. So this is air on air action. This is what gives us our trine. When we have air on air taking place, it means that there's a lot going on in the headspace, a lot going on in our, let's call it intelligence, the downloads that we're receiving, the perspectives that we're challenging, our thoughts, our opinions, our ideas become a little bit scatterbrained, but overwhelming nonetheless, mostly in the positive way, but at certain times, it could definitely be too much. Now, the moon interacting with Pluto is going to have us intensely focused on one particular topic and theme, likely the new ideas that we're having, likely the new options and opportunities that we have to move on and to move forward. Now, of course, Pluto likes to kind of unpack our deepest fears, where it is that we don't feel in control or feel in power, but this is a positive interaction. So we are actually re-scripting our inner dialogue, our inner narrative to be empowered, to feel like we have control, to feel like a, we may had, you know, fearful thoughts in the past, but we're bossing up to a new level of perspective of understanding. We actually feel competent enough to, you know, bring new goals, new visions, new dreams to life. But we do have to have a little bit of laser focus because, again, the Gemini energy has us divided, has us weighing the pros and cons, has us doing the cha-cha-cha. The Aquarius energy that Pluto is in is trying to make us act as the observer to see where within us we are challenging ourselves to think bigger, 
to think broader, to push the boundaries of our comfort zone, especially with the ideas that we're currently kind of, you know, sorting through that we currently have on the table. Now, the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Gemini energy, getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Mercury. So Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. Mercury is in his other rulership in Virgo energy. He does rule over Gemini energy, but he also rules over Virgo energy. Keep in mind, Mercury is slowing down each and every single day as we get closer to his retrograde, meaning our intellect, not as sharp. Our thoughts, our ideas, not as potent. Our ability to articulate and communicate clearly and effectively our thoughts, our ideas to other people, uh, we're struggling. And with this particular energy, because our heart and our head, heart being the moon, head being Mercury, they're not on the same page. They're actually fighting. They're in the boxing ring. They're fighting it out for power. What this could do is lead to misunderstandings, lead to, you know, communication breakdown. We're basically not speaking correctly. And even the words that we are speaking aren't being received in the way that we want them to be received. All very Mercury retrograde like aspects. So we want to take a little bit more caution, a little bit more care with the words that we are using to truly express ourselves. And we want to just take a little bit more time to give that extra attention to make sure that whatever it is that we're receiving from other people, we repeat it back to them to make sure that we're on the same page.